Uh, people have asked me, why doesn't the campus simply build more dormitories? I think in the first place, uh, you know, we're talking about students' personal and professional development and educational development. So really, it is not appropriate to simply say that we're going to have a completely cloistered community. They come in and live within walls and then just go off and suddenly become full-fledged citizens. There is not even a single liberal arts college in, in anywhere in the United States where 100% of the students throughout all their four years live on campus. It, uh, and then in terms of, you know, b being competitive and attra attractive to students who are coming in, we need to allow for uh, an on-campus, off-campus alternatives, particularly in the, uh, the senior year, junior and senior years. Um, with the, when the Commonwealth Honors College is completed this fall, we will have the third largest resident, we will be the third largest residential campus in the whole United States while only having, in fact, not even being the top 50 in terms of undergraduate population. So, so we'll only be behind Michigan State in, ter in terms of the number of beds on campus, which has 37,000 undergraduate students compared to 20,000 undergraduate students on our campus, and Rutgers, which has 31,000 undergraduate students compared to, again, 20,000 undergraduate students. So we really house, uh, as I said, the third largest, and in fact, as a percentage, it's really high. Uh, we have only a responsible plan for growth that has been in place, and it's already um, th that growth of only 3,000 students over a 10-year period uh, is now entering its third year, and it was really in response to that that the 1,500 beds that were added in the Commonwealth Honors College take, took place. So we don't really are, are, are talking about uncontrolled growth of the university at all. Um,